Really glad to be in God's house. Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Life Community Church where we build strong family. I'm super excited about what's going on and God is doing some amazing things. Let us not forget tonight that Arsenal Credit Union is in the atrium and they are prepared and ready to not only give you some opportunities to open up savings accounts, checking account, check accounts, and, and maybe even help second chances for those who messed up the first go around. You know how they go. And then they're, I think they're going to deposit uh, in a savings account the first $5 or something like that. They're going to make the first uh, deposit for you if you open up a new checking account, uh, I mean a new savings account or something tonight. Uh, so maybe you already have something. Maybe you need to do something for your children. Uh, get them started on the process of being money managers and understanding the power of money and the uh, discipline of, of, of having some money, uh, spending some money, and saving some money. Amen? All right. So... Uh, you can do that. Make sure you do that tonight. Go out there and these talks when they got a lot of goodies at the table. Uh, so go by and check them out and see what they have uh, to alter. Offer. Offer. Alter. <laughs> All right. So uh, everybody should have their sermon notes. Uh, everyone should look at that. And uh, if you don't have one, just raise your hand. And then our ushers will be happy to uh, to help you out. Uh, also, I want to make mention that our, our, our teen purity ceremony started last week. And uh, if say your team missed it, and you want to get them in, I think we're going from 10 years old and up. Uh, I think they're going to be doing like a little makeup course uh, tomorrow, doing one of the services, so you can check with someone tonight and see how you can take advantage of that, drop a kid off or be here with them to make sure they get a good start or just catch up next week. Now, let's go ahead and grab your sermon notes. Let's look at someone and smile at them. Let's smile at them, big smile. Bigger than that, come on, bigger than that, there you go. Let's say tonight... Just for a little while, the pastor is going to preach about marriage 101. Amen. Now, we're in this uh, sermon series we're calling uh, Relationships 101, the refresher course we all need. And uh, let us pray. God, we thank you today for your word. We ask that you would help us to understand and apply your word and not let our attitudes or our behaviors uh, stop for what, stop us from uh, achieving your best. Let us honor you with our relationships in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so this sermon series is called Relationships 101, the refresher course we all need. And tonight we're going to talk about marriage. Last week, we kicked this whole thing off, talked about dating, talking about dating. And man, you should have seen the looks I got last week. Who, who was here last week? Let me just see the hands of those who were oh, Okay, okay. And y'all came back. Hallelujah. Amen. We were, hey, um, so we had a lot of fun with that, but I think it was very eye-opening, and, and, and I saw many people, I can't tell you how many people said, had I known this years ago, my life would be so much better, my life would be so much better. And I think uh, many of you tried to get DVDs and CDs, and we kept selling out, so I believe you might be able to get those orders filled tonight if you need to get that. But we talked about that, and, and, and again, I, I, in last week's sermon, I talked a little bit about uh, dating that leads toward marriage. And, and I talked about the fact that marriage and marriages suffer not because of the marriage, but because of the individuals in the marriage. Okay? And I talked about if you, if you had a bad bowl of spaghetti and the, and the spaghetti was just nasty, nobody wanted it. It wasn't because the bowl was nasty. It was because the pasta was either bad or the or the sauce was bad, okay? And, and so, if you change the sauce, or if you change, the, if the sauce gets better or the pasta gets better, you get a better, you know, better ingredients, make better spaghetti. Now, think about this. One time, I, I made some spaghetti, and I was really proud of it. Oh, I, I threw down. I threw, I threw down on the, on the getty, right? And, uh, I mean, it was perfect. I was just, oh, I ate, and I was full. I couldn't eat no more. And, you know, it, it was fresh off, you know, the stove. and still had a little steam coming up. I said, whoo, but I'm full. I can't eat no more, but I'm going to eat on this all week. So I took, the, I took the, uh, the Tupperware bowl, put the top on it, stuck it right in the refrigerator. Some of y'all know what happened, don't you? It, it spoiled. Because I put a hot bowl of spaghetti in the refrigerator I had good pasta, 
off the chain sauce. And I put it in the refrigerator too soon. And because I didn't let it cool down, it spoiled overnight. I, I never had experienced that before. It blew my mind. I was so disappointed because I had planned on eating on this all week. And what, that's what happens sometimes when you get a, 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 a marriage that moves too fast. You got a couple that's, that's right for each other and they can make it, but they cross these lines before they get married, and that spoils everything. I left here last week saying to you all that the lines you don't want to cross in dating is intermingling money. That you, you should not be paying for the date. She should not be paying for the date. You should pay your own way. And some of y'all like, Arr, Arr, Arr. because what happens is once I didn't pay so much money on you, I got some ownership now. Or maybe I feel I'm too invested to say no, although I see warning signs that say you're not right for me, but I just spent too much money on you. I ain't, I ain't bought you too much stuff, so we're going to have to tough this out. I'm going to have to make up my uh, 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 I can't lose like that. And so you, 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 you suffer through a bad dating, and it comes with a bad marriage. I also said that moving too fast is when you intermingle sex in the dating part. Once you cross that line, like, no, I, ain't, mm -mm, I ain't went too far now. You're going to be together. I don't care how crazy they are. And, and you go to from crazy dating to a crazy marriage, and it don't work. I also said that one of the lines you should not cross in dating is drinking. And y'all like, huh? <laughs> but yeah, but how can you, if the government does not want you to drive a car under the influence, how, how much how, do you want to pick a, a life partner under the influence? And so I can be sober in mind if I, if I don't have a drink during the dating period. I don't have to be pressured because I'm not, I didn't put no money out of my pocket, so I don't feel like I've been taken advantage of if, if she says she don't want to be with me or I figure I don't want to be with her. It's a clean break. And if we have not crossed the sexual line, it's also not any emotions tied up in there. And I ain't got to worry about, how oh, you going to just leave me? How you going to throw me? I ain't, got, I ain't all in my feelings. So I, therefore, I can see you for who you are. And whenever we cross those three lines, we put ourselves in a position that, that allows us to make some bad decisions in the, in the day. We, we, we stop speaking up for ourselves. We stop taking responsibility. And we don't even have the courage, some of us, to say, I want to be married. Because we crossed all those lines. And if I say that too fast, they might, I might scare them off. But if you can say out from the office, hey, I'm not just dating just to be out here you know, going around. I am looking for a marriage. I'm looking for a life relationship. And, that, and they can tell you right off the gate, well, I ain't looking for all that. Okay, well, it's just be cool then. No big deal because I ain't paying no money for you. You ain't paying no money for me. We ain't crossing no sexual line. And, you know, holler. But if you take that good spaghetti and put it in the refrigerator while it's still hot, it's going to spoil. Making some sense. So let's look at some of the things we need to talk about when it comes to marriage. Well, first of all, look at this. Hebrews 13, 4. Y'all ready? Let's read together. One, two, three, and read. Honor marriage and guard the sacredness of sexual intimacy between wife and husband. God. Okay. Now, first thing I want you to get is circle that word honor. He says, honor marriage. And I think for some reason we have reduced marriage down to just a piece of paper. No, no, no. Marriage is a miracle. It's a miracle of two people becoming one. It's a miracle that God does some amazing things and people can share life together and be happy. That is truly a miracle, but we, we reduce it down to oh, just a piece of paper, just a little something. No, no, it's huge. But it not only says honor marriage, but it also says guard the sacredness of sex, sexual intimacy. You can't just take sex lightly. See, we reduce sex down to something nasty, rated X. No, no, no. God created sex. We're going to talk about that actually next week. We're going to show you how to get the maximum out of it. Out, out, hey, yeah, we're going to, yeah, I ain't going to spill the beans. Yeah, yeah, you might want to come back for that one. Amen? So God says, honor marriage, guard uh, your sexual intimacy. Uh, he, he draws a line between casual sex and, uh, and all that. Uh, and, and he says, I want you to get this. 
it's not something to be taken lightly, but it's a beautiful thing. It's an honorable thing. And everywhere you go, you can have people having jokes about marriage, and marriage is this, and, and it's ball and chain, and bomb tied, nah, nah, because they've reduced it down from the miracle and the spiritual thing that it is to something that's like, ah. Eh. Amen? So those of you who are married, I really want you to get the right mindset about marriage. Those of you who are single and thinking about marriage, I need you to really know that it's not necessarily something you should go into lightly. All right? It says this now. Check this out. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 89. It says, to the, Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to remain unmarried, as I do. But if you cannot control, if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with what? Passion. What, 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 what the writer is saying here, he's saying, listen, there's nothing wrong with being single. You can be perfectly happy and have all the blessings that God wants you to have and not be married. I, I want you all to get that, okay? I want you to know that. I want you to own that. And, and, and that is a, a, it is a thing called the gift of singleness, and you can be happily single. Now, if you cannot control your sexual desires and you want to be with somebody, then it says it's better for you to go on, go do the hard work and find a mate. Amen? All right, so let's look at some uh, misconceptions of, of marriage. Here we go, number one. Number one, the first thing, write this down, is that I have to be married in order to be happy. Eh, anybody know that's wrong, right? I know a whole lot of people who are married and not, they're not happy, right? I know a whole lot of people who are single and are happy. So it's not about a person making you happy. You, happiness is something you decide, I'm going to do. Now, you, you, this morning, you could have woke up this morning and just made up your mind, it's going to be a horrible day. It's cold. I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. And you just, you just decide you're going to have a horrible day. And no matter what, no matter what uh, you do, it, it, no matter what nobody do for you, you just made your mind up. Or you can decide, hey, this is going to be a great day. I'm going to have a good day today. And happiness is your choice. All right? And so it's not about another person. Write this down. A successful marriage is all about being in love. Write that down. That's the misconception. And the misconception is that we're all. They think they sum it up. That all we got to do is just be in love. And that works for about two, three weeks. All right? And after that, you start looking at this person is crazy. This person don't know how to do anything. This person is a child in a grown person's body. What have I done? Because all of a sudden you began to see clearly who you have, and, and, you, and you don't even care about the, 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 uh, the investments and all that. So that's, that's a problem. Number three, uh, the person I marry will complete me. That's a really big myth. People are thinking that I'm going to be a happier person, I'm going to be a better person once I re meet this right person. And they're going to take care of me, and they're going to make me better, and they're going to make me complete. No. Amen? That's a, that's a myth. And then number four, write this down. I may have married the wrong person. People start thinking, oh, man, I didn't mess up. That's kind of the first line I hear when somebody fed up, Pastor, I think I married the wrong person. Can I help you out? If once you say I do in front of God, God says to you that's the right person. Now you got to be about the work of growing and becoming better. Any two people on the planet can make it if they got God in common. Amen? If you, if you are saved, you can make it. It's just going to be a little more work involved. People say, people say well, are we just so... We, we're not compatible. Well, I bet and I are not compatible either. And truly are we happy. Yes, we are happy. Super happy. But we are opposite on every end. Every end. I'm the kind of person, I don't have to go on vacation ever. I ain't got to see nothing. Ever. I can go to work and go home. My ideal of vacation is going somewhere and sleeping till, well, you get up early, eat breakfast. Go back to sleep until it's time for lunch. You get up and you eat lunch and you go back to sleep until it's time to eat dinner. And you get up and you eat some snacks and some desserts and go back to sleep for 10, 12 days and then come home. 
My wife want to see everything twice. And so we're, so you don't have to be compatible to make our TV shows are totally opposite. I'm an early riser. She's a she's a night owl, right? I'm a spender. She's tight. She don't like to get a headache if she spends too much money. Totally opposite, but yet we're we're perfectly happy. I mean, for real, for real happy. I'm not trying to put no airs. I mean, for real. And if you if if we wasn't, you'd be able to tell. No, for real, you'd be able to tell. And so I'm not. I'm saying to you, you don't have to have perfect compatibility to be perfect for each other or to be able to make it work. Any two people can make it work, but it's going to take extra effort. In other words, it would be easier for me if she liked the shows I like to watch. It would be easy to, for me if she didn't like holding the remote control at all. But because she likes certain shows and she likes the remote control too, that makes I have to compromise, I have to work, it. That's, that's extra work, but we make it work. We even got some, some extra TVs in the house just in case. We don't feel like making it work today. There's no argument about it, I'll be over here. All right? What, what I'm saying is that any two people can make it, it just requires more work and more effort and more sacrifice that you can be truly happy. So before you say, I got the wrong person, listen to the rest of the sermon before we do that, all right? Here we go. Let's turn the inside cover. We're going to look at the math of marriage, the math of marriage. And we're going to do some stages here today. And so we talked about dating last week. And dating is that time where you're not drinking, you're not having sex, you're not spending money on each other. You're just kind of seeing, if, you know, you're attracted to each other, but you're trying to see, you know, is this something we can make work here? So then you graduate from a dating relationship to an engagement. So write this down. Engagement stage is one, this is the math, plus one equals two. You're still separate. You're not living together, supposedly, right? You're still not spending money on each other. And you're still not drinking and all that kind of stuff because you're still trying to stay clear. Stay clear. This is that engagement time where you spend this time uh, discovering what's going on with your life. What kind of baggage do you bring to the table? Do you know that many people never discover the luggage and baggage the other person has until after they get married? That's when you find out about the student loans and the credit cards and who you didn't co-sign for. And, oh, you got an extra kid out there I didn't know about. Oh, so when are you going to tell me that? And now you got all this stuff out there that, you, that, that you've been hiding, but or did I hide it or you just were so preoccupied with the money, the sex, the drinking that you didn't even pay attention to it. So this is that time of the, of the, of the relationship where you go from dating to engagement. You're still two separate people, but I'm, I'm looking intently into your life. You're looking intently into my life, and we're doing major discovery time. I'm laying it all on the table. There's no secrets now. I know what you make, you know what I make. I see how you spend money, I see you see how I spend money. I see how you do Christmas, you see how I do Christmas. Because some people, Christmas is a deal breaker. They grew up, they, and they pay us with about hundreds of dollars worth of stuff, they wouldn't pay rent, wouldn't pay nothing, and they just, you know, be catching up doing it. And the other person's like, no, no, oh no, you get one thing. And the kid's gonna get a gift. You're like, oh no, my baby gonna have a look at it. We don't have, and then bow. But you didn't find that out until after you got married. You didn't find out that they had all this other the garnishments and stuff <laughs> until after y'all commingled. Oh god! And then they start snatching your money. Like, oh wait a minute, hold up, I married the wrong person. No, 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 it's the same person. But you could have decided. See, I'm take something. It's easier to end an engagement than it is to end a marriage. And the engagement period is the time where you're actually discovering each other. You know what most people use their engagement time for? Planning a wedding. He popped the question, she say I do, and they spend the next six to eight months planning a wedding. They don't ask any question. They're not, they're not planning a marriage. They're planning a wedding day. 
And they didn't, they didn't discover each other. They didn't take any classes. They didn't get any counseling. They didn't do anything like that. They're just looking for colors and, and this and this kind of dress over here and a venue and who's going to do the photography and where my mama going to go sit at and who's going to walk me down and who's going to be the father. And all, you sure ain't inviting them. Man. It's just, and that's the whole thing. And then you get married after this whirlwind of all this stuff happening. Then you settle down. You look at each other and you're like, okay, let's make this work. And you find out, whoa. No, 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 we can't do that. Yes, that's what I do. No, no, no. And then you got all these no, no, no's. It was always there, but we didn't take the discovery time. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says this. But before we get there, an engagement is a period of time where couples uh, deal with their history. Write that down. All right, so you got one plus one equals two, which is, you know, sensible. But then... The history is where we deal with, is what was dealt with during the engagement. The Bible says this. The Lord said, it is not good for, for the man to be alone. This is Genesis 2, 18. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now, a helper is somebody that's going to come alongside you and help you do what you're doing. So first of all, what are you doing? And so, as a man, you need to be saying, okay, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, and this is what God has called me to do, so to speak. This is my, this is my direction, this is my vision for my life. And as a, as, a, as a woman, you say, okay, is this what I want to spend the rest of my life supporting? And then we don't have, we, 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 or you marry a man with no vision, that's not doing anything, and then you want to go into the marriage and cast vision, and set the, set the order, and now you are the order. Because God's not going to bless that. He didn't make you the head. God made the man the head of the relationship. I need you to get that. Don't, don't go past that. He, he, when you say yes and I, you say I do, he becomes the head of the relationship. So what that means is, if you have a discussion and you all can agree, then he makes the decision, and you follow that. Shoot, he don't know I made no decision. Well, don't marry. You discover that during the engagement. You don't figure that out in the first year of marriage. I want you to get that. It doesn't make any kind of sense. See, 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 a lot of, a lot, especially women, have put their life on pause until they get married. And then they have so many regrets because they get somebody who's not on their level and now they got to put their life, now they can't really reach their dreams because now they got to follow his vision, which is not what you thought it should be. So now you're going to try to lead him. You're going to try to lead him and then it doesn't work. I can't tell you how many times my brothers come to me and say, okay, what do you need me to do? Wait, wait, okay, how can I help you? And, you? and brothers, you need to have an answer for that. And it needs to be clear, this is exactly what, I, this is, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And this is, where I want to see, this is where I want to see us in three years, four years, five years, two years, 12 months from now. This is what I'm trying to knock out. This is what I'm trying to make happen. And I'm telling you something, men, if, you can, if, you got, if you're clear about who you are and where you're going, wow. Because women are amazing. They're like nobody else on the planet. You know, Women, you give them one seed, they come back nine months later with a whole human being. Who does that? It's amazing. One little, one little seed, a whole human comes out. What? You give her a spark of an idea. You give her a glimmer of where you're trying to go, and she's going to come back with a plan. Just show you how to get there. But now, here's the deal. If you don't have a vision, and you don't have a plan, some women can't sit idle. <laughs> They're going to come up with their own vision and their own plan, and they throw the whole, the whole thing out of order. Does that make some sense? So here's what, this is what God says. So check this out. Uh, we talked about this last week a little bit. But uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, and 15 says this. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can 
uh, righteousness be a partner with wickedness? And, and no, these are rhetorical, right? The answer is, it can't. How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a, a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? So in other words, see, it's not just about your compatibility here, but it's really about you have to meet on another level. You, you guys are meeting on a spiritual level. And if you're going in two opposite ways spiritually, it's, it's going to be very difficult, near impossible to make it work. You really want to know in the dating stage, what is your spiritual life like before you even go to the engagement stage? And many people will find that well, she has a good heart. Or, or he's really a good person. No, are they a believer in Jesus Christ? Are they a follower of Christ? And if so, how are they showing their faith? I ain't talking about just going to church because a lot of people go to church. Amen. Amen. A whole lot of people show up at church. I'm talking about do they have a powerful prayer life? Okay, do they have a prayer life? Are they a tither? Are they serving in ministry anywhere? Are they giving God any of the time or talent back? These are things you figure out in the dating process. And so if all those boxes are checked, you might not like the same shows, you might not like the same foods, you might not have the same background, but if you can meet on that spiritual commonality, then you can make the rest of it work. Hush came over the crowd. Y'all was quiet last week, too. I don't know. Just... See, here's the deal. I want you to get this. Don't miss this point. When some people say, well, God is being so exclusive. And I got, just, they can't marry nobody. Else. Here's the deal. In order to love, you have to, been, you have, to have been loved. As a believer in Christ, I have experienced his unconditional love, his perfect love. I know what it feels like to have somebody love you in spite of you. Having now experienced that, it makes it easier for me to try to love like God loves. But if I have no clue of what unconditional love feels like, then all my love is going to be conditional. I love you because you're fine. I love you because you can cook. I love you because you help me out. So that means if any of those three things stop, my love stops. Because I don't have a concept as, as an unbeliever. I don't even know what it feels like to have somebody love you in spite of you. To love you and you don't deserve to be loved. To have mercy on you and you need judgment. To have grace with you and give you what you don't deserve when you need to be knocked down. They pick you out. You know, I, I know what it feels feels like to have a relationship with God that's personal and intimate and he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. He loves me. And now that I experience that, I'm able, I'm in a position now to love somebody. You know, have you ever loved somebody the way he loves you, the way God loves you? Have you ever loved? See, see, see if you're not a believer, you don't even understand what we're talking about. So now you got this believer who's experienced God's unconditional love pouring out and giving and sacrificing and giving her, and they got this other person just soaking it all up and ain't getting nothing back because that's what they don't understand. And then you get tired. You say, I ain't doing it no more. And now I get the call. I think I married the wrong person. So, you go from the dating stage to stage one. Now, I'm not, not, not talking about not, I'm not, 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 I'm talking about the engagement stage in stage one. Dating is the pre-engagement, okay? Well, better not, we've dated for maybe a year. We've engaged for a little less than a year. Married. You don't need to be dating 10 years, 6 years, engaged 20 years. I meet people all the time. We've been married 2 years, been together 18. What? Huh? What? Say that? Huh? Really? You, see, when you go that long without God's blessing, without God's covering, without the miracle of marriage, you've missed out on so much that God had in store because you, you're just a little bit out of bounds there. 
you missed his covering. You missed his enhancements. Oh. The Bible says where two touch and agree, I'm there in the midst. Oh, y'all don't, y'all don't miss. Listen, one by myself, I can get prayers answered. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. By myself, God moves mountain, open up doors and perform miracles. When I call on his holy name in the name of Jesus. But when I touch and agree with another born again believer, and while Ben and I began to pray to God, oh, somebody better look out up in here. Move mountain. It's all now. Look at, say, See, that's why, he, that's why Satan tried to keep married people arguing so they don't agree. He tried to keep you separated and, and, and keep you in that dating, in that out loud, that out, out of bounds stage so that you don't ever come under his grace and his blessing and the power that comes with a couple that's touching and agreeing. You know that's, ooh. Ooh. Can you imagine the power? One put 10,000 to fight. Can you imagine what happened? It's amazing, man. But oh, it's just a piece of paper. No, it's not. It's a miracle. It is amazing. When I submit to the will of God, and she submits to the will of God, and we come to art, oh, it's just amazing what God does. So we move to the second stage, and this is the ceremony. This is the ceremony. Most people blow this, but here it is. This is where one plus one equals one. No, I did not make a mistake. One plus one equals what? One. This is the miracle of God's math. The math of marriage is that in the engagement, one plus one equals two. But in the marriage ceremony, there's a ceremony that happens. One plus one equals one. And unfortunately, people put a lot of time, energy, and money planning the ceremony and don't put very, put, put very little time, energy, and money planning the life after the ceremony. It's amazing how many people will spend ten or $15,000 on a ceremony and don't have any money in the bank for the marriage. There's no savings. There's no emergency fund. There's debt everywhere. Oh, everybody. You could have took that 15000 and paid somebody off or put, started a retirement. So you could, I mean, but, but we don't think like that. We think about that wedding day. And can I just help you out, for those of you who are thinking to get married, can I just help you out? Let me just see if I can throw this out there. In this area of the world, your wedding is not going to be that impressive compared to all the stuff that the celebrities are doing. Do you understand that most of the stuff at the ceremony is not even about the couple? It's about the guests and trying to impress them with the little trinkets on the table, the little bubbles over here, and the little thing over there. They got a little table over there. They got a candy bar over there. And, 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 and then all the decorations. And she didn't miss all the bridesmaids because she, everybody, when she come in, the whole ceremony, oh, we at the end. Let the wedding ceremony be about you, your spouse, your future spouse, and God. Because let me tell you what, ain't nobody going to be bragging about that chicken two years from now. At your, at your, that little dry chicken and the potatoes and them carrots. Ain't nobody going to be bragging about that. Boy, I remember that. I remember when y'all got back. Give me that chicken. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. I'm tell you something. Now, I do remember one wedding meal. This couple, I married them uh, at, at Grand Mariah Golf Course. And I don't know who they had in the kitchen at that time. This has been a while back. But they had some fried chicken. <laughs> to this day, I be dreaming about that. Like, That's the best chicken I ever had in my life. Oh, my God. It was... That's about it. I don't, know, I don't remember no colors. I don't remember what they had on the tables. I don't remember what the bridesmaid had on or what the grooms had on. They had some pretty good chicken. So, listen. Do what you like and what's going to be rememberable for you and not try to spend thousands of dollars trying to impress your friends your families and your friends friends and your ah. well, my better not this is a long time ago we've been together for you know a couple of decades going on three decades now uh but y'all not gonna believe me so you can access it you see it our whole thing rings and all 1200 bucks 
We had we had we had a, a photographer, a videographer. It was VHS, but that's okay. Don't don't hate. <laughs> and everything, twelve hundred dollars. And we kicked it. Nah, I ain't saying you gotta go that low. But we did what we could afford. Cause I was at that stage in my life where I wasn't trying to impress nobody no more. I love this lady. I want to spend my life with her. If y'all come, fine. If not, I do, you do, we do, let's do. I, I'm over all that. You, you get what I'm saying? We started off with a really small ring. I mean, her ring, it, it didn't have a diamond. It had a chip. You know, back then you get a, no, I'm serious. I'm not lying. It had a diamond, you know, back then you could go to Grandpa's, and I got a set, <laughs> and it had, a, it had a chip in it, it had a diamond chip in it. It was like a, like a, like a piece of diamond broke off that way they put that on there. That's how that worked. That's how that worked. And, and, and we were happy, and she was happy. We showed, we showed KJ, my son, the ring uh, some years later, because I think, I, I think it was the time I had... Got her her second upgrade. You know, she, she had the first one, then we got an upgrade, and then we got a, the, the, the second upgrade. And so we brought out the old ring and showed it to KJ. He said, he looked at my wife and said, and you said yes to this? <laughs> we, well, I mean, we still have it, and every now and then we go back and look at it. We just go back and look at it and, and just thank God for humble beginnings, and, and, and it didn't matter. I've seen people get married with four carrots. And don't even stay married. And then don't even wear the ring after that. If, if somebody give me a four carat, I don't care if I don't like you or not, I'm wearing this thing. <laughs> Might be on a different finger, but I'm wearing this four carat. That's crazy talk, right? So he says, he says, this explains why a man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into what? One. Now the man and his wife were both naked, and, and, and but they felt no what? Shame. Here's the deal. What I want you to focus on is the two were united into one. That's that one plus one equals one. Here's the deal. The key goes back to the man left his father and his mother, and he established his own household. If you date somebody, and they can't afford to take care of themselves, It's not that staying with somebody is not manly. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying they, they might choose to stay with somebody because they're trying to help somebody out or they just being whatever. But if you stand with somebody because you can't afford to live on your own, that's a different situation. You're about to take somebody else's liability and bring that liability into your house. I know a lot of people that may stay with their cousin or their brother or their, you know, whatever. They may stay with an elderly parent because it's a convenient thing. It's not that they can't live on their own. When you got a grown man who can't support himself, then he's not ready for marriage. There's no way to say it. Sometimes you got you to gotta let them grow up and, and you got to see them standing on their own two feet. So the, so the job of the, according to the scriptures, I leave my mother, I leave my father, I establish my own household, I get my own vision, and now I'm ready after I've proven that I can take care of me to bring somebody else in and take care of them. If she doesn't work, I'm saying, don't worry about that. If you ride with me, I got you. Now, if, if we're working on what I got, then you got to be ready and willing to, to live on my level. Can't live on this level, and I'm living, you know, because if, I, if I'm not there. Now, if you want to live over here, we both got to do a little work. That's making some sense. But nobody talks about that. So, let's move on. The requirement for, write this down, the requirement for oneness is two complete people. This is, this is really good. We got to really move. The requirement for oneness is two complete people. Marriage is not meant to be a place where one uh, gets completed as a person. So you need to come already complete. 
Okay? You need to be a whole person. Ladies, you need to be a whole woman by yourself. And you need to be okay with who you are and your direction to know what you're trying to do. Men, you need to be able to stand on your own two feet and be a whole person by yourself, right? Write this down. We must understand that the difference between completing and complementing each other. Where, where, while Bella does not complete me, she definitely complements me. In other words, she's strong in areas where I'm weak. Right? And I'm strong in areas where she's weak. And because we cooperate, I cover her weak areas, she covers my weak areas, and you can't even see the cracks in our armor. Because we're covering each other. And because she knows where my weak spots are, she's the very one who can expose me and really hurt me. It's very difficult for people outside of that, our marriage to hurt me. Because they don't even know where to poke. But she knows. If anybody could tear me up, it would be her. And vice versa. But when we work together, we complement each other. Okay? Stage three. This is a little funny here. Stage three is commitment stage. And this is where one plus one equals infinity. Write that down. That's that sideways eight. Remember that from math school back in the day? Infinity. This is, this is, that, this is that symbol I want you to write down that says we're going to work it out. We, we, didn't, we didn't get married to get divorced. I don't ever recommend you get a prenuptial agreement, a, pre, a prenup. Never. If somebody wants to get a prenup, go ahead and just leave. Because you know what a prenup is? A prenup is a divorce before you get married. And what they're saying to us, I know we ain't going to make it. So let's go ahead and settle the terms of our divorce now. So you're going to get this, you're going to get that. No, I don't plan on not making it. Well, I got too much stuff, so it means you love your stuff more than you love me. That's fine. You and your stuff be happy. Does it make some sense? Is it making sense? So here's what it says. They make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with, with each other, loving one another. Here it is. Working together. Underline that. Working together with one mind and one purpose. See, any marriage can work if you're working together. All right? Anybody can make it if you're working together like that. All right? He said, uh, make every effort to keep yourselves uh, united in the spirit, uh, binding yourselves together with what? Peace. This is so important, my friends, that we do this. See, when, when we're working together, Satan gets nervous. When you're working together, that's where true joy and happiness can come. On the top of the next page, I'm just going to give you these. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about them uh, because they're pretty much self-explanatory. But a, a complete person can do the following. So here's what I'm saying to you that are already married. If you're having struggles in your marriage, I'm guaranteeing you that somewhere or one of these six things is missing. If you're engaged to be married, you need to be strengthening all these things before you get married. This is who you need to become in order to have a successful marriage. But number one, write this down. Communication. We got a whole sermon we're going to do on communication. All right? An unreliable messenger can cause a lot of trouble. Reliable communication permits, uh, permits what? Progress. All right? Consideration. Always be humble, gentle, and patient. Show your love by, by being tolerant with what? With one another. All right? That means if you're going to work it out, you've got to be able to accept some things and not try to change every little thing that that person does that gets on your nerve. Right? So, so let me give you an example. Sometimes while Veda is talking to me, we're in the car. And somebody sends her a text message. And so she'll say, and Kendall, what I need you to do is... Go over to... Uh, And then sometimes she'll finish it, sometimes she'll <laughs> Now that could be an argument and a half right there. That could be a knockdown drag out. Look at put the phone down when you're talking to me. Put the phone. Uh, uh, you know what? It's no big deal. It's, 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 oops. Because when I weigh everything that she does for me 
and how she blesses me to the to this, I can I can deal with that. That's nothing. Can I get what I'm saying? I don't want you to think that our well, better not as perfect, perfect people and then we never get on each other's nerves. That's not true. But we love each other and we're extremely happy because we don't sweat the small stuff. We are considerate and we, we, we tolerate the other stuff that, that because nobody's perfect. And if I tried to critique her on every little thing so she'll be perfect in my sight, she'll be miserable. And if she tried to critique me, I'd be miserable. So it's just, some stuff you just let it go. And I'm sure that's about 10 or 12 things that she could just, that I, that I do on a daily. You know, I'm a mess. I don't know if y'all know that. I'm a mess. Number three, compromise. Love is not your manner or selfish or uh, what? Y'all see where I am? Okay, read. One, two, three, go. Love is not ear mannered or. See, here's what I want you to get. When you get married, you have to decrease sometimes so the other person can increase. In other words, I don't always get my way because I'm not by myself anymore. Are y'all getting that? I'm not always. I'm, I'm, sometimes I get what I want. Sometimes, sometimes I, I, I get to watch Columbo. Sometimes I record it and watch it later. Sometimes I have to watch the Housewives of Atlanta. Sometimes she records it and watch it later. She don't always get her way. I don't always get my way. But at the end of the day, I am so happy. I'm, I'm like. Zippity do die. I'm for real, for real. I, I look forward to seeing her. You know, I've seen people that can't stand to see each other no more because they nick pick each other to death. We're going to talk about that when we deal with this thing called conflict one on one. That's going to be a major blessing for you, whether you're married or single or not. Just gonna, or your teenage, it's just going to be a blessing for you. Anyway, all right, number four uh, courtship. Courtship. Uh, Proverbs 5.19. A loving doe. A graceful deer, may her breath satisfy you always, and may you be in, may you be ever intoxicated with her love. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that next week. Amen. <laughs> Commitment. Let's read Malachi two sixteen together. One two three go. Now, I know he says wife. He hates it when the wife do bad things to the husband too. Let me go ahead and put that out there for the fellas, right? He don't like that either, right? But here's the deal. He says, that's not what I'm about. And, and I'll tell you now, if you, if, if you are communicating, considerate, compromising, courtship, and commitment, you're going to make it. But I guarantee you, if you don't like each other right now, some of this stuff, if not all of it, is missing. Okay? Uh, it says this, uh, love never gives up, no, love never loses faith, it is always hopeful and endures through every what? Circumstances. So no matter how bad it gets, you know, you, you, if you choose to, you can make it. If you, if you choose to fight for your marriage and not fight each other, you can make it. Now I'm not advocating that you stay in any abusive relationship or, or things like that. Uh, but I know that God can, can make anything work. Some people have to get separated to work on themselves and become a complete person, then come back together. All right? You got to be careful with that. And then number six, the foundation of it all, write this down, Christ. Christ. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, right? Just as the Son of Man did not come to, to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for others. In other words, God says, I, Jesus says, I come to, to, to serve you. I come to know. So in a, in, a, in a marriage, you come into not just be waited on hand and foot, but what can I do for you? How can I bless you? It should almost be you guys falling over each other trying to outserve each other. All right? The last, the last feeling on the back of the page there is this. I will work on the skills I need. 
to become a complete person. So what I want you to do is look at those six things on the other page there we just turned from and see which of these six am I lacking in. Okay? Maybe you got a, a, some shortcomings in all six of them. But, but if, you, if, you, if, you got the, if number six is missing, that's the first stop, guys. That's the first stop, ladies. Get Jesus Christ in your life, become a believer, and then it's going to make a, all these other stuff easier to get. All right? Um, and so we'll talk about courtship and all that stuff ne in, in next week, and we got some big things happening. So work on being a complete what? Person. So now, get your connection card out, because I believe that God didn't have you come to church just to go through the motions today, but I believe <clears throat> that he wants you to take some next steps. So maybe your next step today is sign up for a growth group. We're going to be signing up for growth groups for another week or two, and then uh, after that, we'll shut off the registration because by then we'll be got a little further into it. You have to wait for the next semester. Uh, we're going to read our memory verse. We're going to focus on personal growth. Maybe you say, I'm going to focus on my personal growth. Whether you're separated, married, or dating, engaged, single, be working on your personal growth. And then if you're married and you're having some problems in your marriage, fight for the marriage. All right? I've known couples who didn't have money for counseling, they went and charged on their credit card for the counselor. They, they fought for the man. They, they wouldn't have do what they had to do. They went into a debt trying to get the they, they, they worked out, paid off the credit card, and they're forever get grateful to MasterCard to this day. Uh, maybe, maybe you say, I'm, I'm joining church today. Or I'm accepting Christ for the first time. Or I want to share my testimony how God has blessed me or blessed our marriage or blessed me, helped me grow and how, and how I was able to come overcome. Maybe you need prayer for your relationship or for your personal growth. At the end of the day, I'm responsible for my personal growth and my relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't tell you how many times I ask a couple, I say, so, so why did you do that? Well, because she said this here. So why did you say that? Because he did this here. And neither one of them took responsibility for their behavior. They blamed their behavior on the other person. I'm responsible for my own growth and how I respond. On the right-hand side, there's some opportunities to serve. Check any of those boxes that you feel led by God to do. And we are highlighting some things there. we got some big opportunities coming up. And uh, we thank God for that. So now let's stand together all over the room if you're able to stand. And then we're going to... Uh